be here. Just trying to look at the lay of the land. I trying to take some sort of landmarks that I had earlier. There was that tree there, so she should be here somewhere, Seb. So we've, maybe we'll find her just lying up on one of these thickets. Because um, there is the big tree, and she came in this direction. Um, so from here, it's probably going to be better. It's a little game of trying to find her in this. It's really not friendly for us to get anywhere near a leopard, but we're going to try nonetheless and just see. Okay, there's the drainage. So I should be somewhere in the right place, I think. Oh, there she is. She's right in front of us. So she is here just in front. So I'll stop here because I don't want to push her any further, but she's hidden and perfectly camouflaged just in front of us at the moment. So I asked the guys just now who that leopard must be with the kill because apparently they the leopard is back there. So it must be either Kuchava or Inkanyeni that's in that area. Apparently it's near Chitwa driveway but on the northern side in Torchwood. So we know that Kuchava and Inkanyeni have been in that section and so I think it must be Kuchava if everyone's getting a little bit confused with Tandi. Although she's such a young leopard, I don't know, it's difficult to confuse the two of them. As you see, she's just watching an emerald spotted wood dove that came past her. And now back to taking it easy. There's a little wood dove is on the floor going past. It's a beautiful little dove, isn't it? And they've got the most wonderful colors, these emerald spotted wood doves. They, especially when the sun just glints onto them. And you'll find that they get a beautiful sort of green tinge there. You see how just a little bit of a shimmer of green as the light hits. So very pretty. We do also get blue spotted wood doves in South Africa, but not down here in the Sabi Sands. They occur more to our north. These guys are the ones that we get here. And they also got a very cool call. And I wonder if Tandy's going to wake up as our dove meanders towards it. Dove, be careful. Don't go through the bush. You're going to get a nasty surprise on the other side. Although Tandy's in no state to be hunting doves at this stage. She's a sleepy cat and is just taking it very easy and resting. I'm sure she is going to move as that sun starts to dip down. Now just news on the Inkuma Pride and why we haven't been up that way with Tandi sleeping like this. It's because the Inkuma Pride has just unfortunately crossed towards Tam uh, towards Tamburti Dam just north of Bufuzuk and the, and the visual is not great at the moment. The cubs apparently have been left on our side and they've gone to Tamburti Dam for water and so we're not going to head up there if we can't really see them and we don't want to go to where the cubs are if they're on their own. So we're going to sit here rather with Tandi and hope for a reuniting of the family with her son Tamba and hopefully the two of them will come together and we'll be able to see them. You see, look at how her breathing rate has slowed down. As it's gotten cooler this afternoon, so that breathing rate is slowing minute by minute, and she's in a far more relaxed breathing situation. Jasper, you're wondering if leopards would kill or confront a venomous snake, or if they'd move away from them. Well, they will confront venomous snakes. I've seen a leopard going, particularly young leopards, they're not 100% sure of things, and they go after cobras and puff adders and even mumbas. And we know that Tandi and, and uh, Tamba were involved in that crazy incident with the black mamba and the brown snake eagle on Chitwa, where they had a little bit of a kind of altercation, and Tandi was smacking at the the black mamba and, and trying to grab it so they do go after venomous snakes from time to time this injury though I don't think is relating to a venomous snake generally when you get something like a mamba if it bit her she would probably be very sick and, and, and if not die if it was something like a cobra or a puff adder we would see an area of massive swelling and necrosis of the of the skin so it's almost like frostbite that you would see and you'd see a big swelling area and I remember that the ravens caught female she had a cub that was bitten by what looked like a puff adder to the chest and her whole chest swelled and went black 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 and then she passed away after that so or he should i say passed away after that so it's 
it does happen that they do confront venomous snakes, but in this situation, I don't think it's a venomous snake. Like I say, I'm I'm sure that it's to do with hunting. And I was talking to Aubrey now, and he was saying to me this morning, he was watching her hunt this diker in this area, and the more she ran, the, the more she started limping. So it's obviously a strain injury. It's something like us pulling a hamstring or something like that. And you know, if you've ever pulled a hamstring, how uncomfortable that can be and how difficult it is to move around and any time you exert more energy the the worse it feels and so it'll be a similar case with Tandy and her front leg she's gonna you know the more she uses it it's it's going to hurt a little bit but slowly but surely it will start to heal and eventually she'll be okay I don't really have too much worry about her. if she can walk like that in a situation where there's not too much adrenaline pumping then she'll be okay as soon as she has a situation where adrenaline's pumping she'll be able to run and grab food items so i think she'll be okay much like shadow the, the two of them both are going to have to try and just deal with the injuries that they've got but crazy to think that both sisters i still can't get over it that they both got injuries at the moment it's very weird can see that the wind is definitely picking up there's a change in temperature today massively well this afternoon should I say yesterday afternoon this time was very hot but now it's quite cool this afternoon pause you asking if I think there's something out here attacking the leopards as I've stated twice this afternoon no I don't think anything has attacked these individuals these are injuries that are muscular or bone structure injuries they are not attacks from another animal there's nothing that's coming out and eating these leopards or getting into their legs and, and breaking their legs it's, it's not the case it's, this is something that has happened in a natural situation when they run around and like I say they put their foot somewhere where they've overexerted themselves or they've in some way managed to hurt a muscle it's it's like us as people if we run and our foot lands in a slightly awkward way we can roll over an ankle or we can tear a hamstring or tear a calf muscle it's the exact same thing that we're seeing with this individual now there might be a bone structure injury there there might be a break or a fracture in the bone as well difficult to say it's not like we can just x-ray these females and know but there is no physical attack sign on these individuals that something has actually gone after it so it's not like there's other leopards or lions or um hyenas or elephant or any of those individuals buffalo that have gone after these when when there's attacks within animals and they go after each other the signs are generally very clear there's some sort of of puncture wound somewhere there's some sort of a gaping wound like what we saw on the lioness yesterday afternoon that's a sign of an individual that has come into contact with another animal there's i highly doubt there's anything attacking them and, and as to all the other leopards that have had issues in the last few months and the disappearance of some others it's just one of those things it's a time when after a drought maybe we've had a situation where some of the leopards are a little bit weaker and um, there's been a lot of higher density of lion population higher density of hyena population and these animals then might unfortunately be running into those we know that some of them have been killed by lions others might be attacked with into a leopard dynamic so we know when Lamula went missing Anderson was seen chasing him so it's possible Anderson got hold of him and then there's others that are just older females that their bodies slowly but surely are breaking down so in the case of Saleh for those of you that did it, missed it she had a number of in number of problems that were all related to old age so she had you know she had blood in her abdomen she had an enlarged liver she had lesions on her lungs which is very similar or very typical of tuberculosis the test hasn't come back yet but could be that porcupine quills that are infected under the skin so a number of different things it's a hard life out here and so when they reach 12 13 14 years of age some of those things and the combination of those things can lead to them succumbing to it so it's not that something's out here there's not some hidden agenda that's going on we as people are not poisoning them hurting them hunting them or any of the other things that people have been saying that we do out here and that we're covering up for there's most definitely none of that there's no trophy hunting that happens here these are just individuals that are living a life that is a hard life these animals get hurt they get injured we see impalas limping we see nyala limping we see elephants limping it's all of these animals go for it and if you had to put a population of people out here in the sabi sands and you let them run around for a year you would find many people with injuries out here that would limp around for a few days and eventually they would come right it's the exact same thing with these animals there's no like i say thought out plan that's hurting them or anything that's untoward happening it's just nature and it's life 
and the way that these animals live. They have a hard life. It's not a princess fairy tale like the Lion King out here. These animals really have it tough and they have to survive every minute of the day and there are many, many problems that a leopard can have or a lion or whatever the animal is. There's predators, there's natural illnesses, there's um, conditions that change, there's cold patches, hot patches, there's you know terrain changes, um, climate changes, water changes, these things are all things that they've got to survive and us as people we have brains and it allows us to develop systems that make it comfortable for us but if you had to put us out here with none of the technology that we have today our chances of surviving would be just like these leopards it would be very difficult for us to survive out here and we'd have to be really clever and really good about it and we would have setbacks like injuries like feeling ill all of those kind of things these animals are not bulletproof and and they are certainly not going to you know made of solid steel that they don't get hurt or, or injured at some points as well.